Good morning, true crime friends. I'm wrestling with my dog this morning in an ongoing effort to keep her from barking while I'm trying to talk. Every time I press the record button, she's like, Ruff. she has a lot to say. Okay, look, look, look. No, look, say hi to the nice people. Holly, say hi to the nice people. This is my little friend, Holly. She's an Escapoo, right? We rescued her from a breeder in the Poconos. Anyway, um... Hey, how y'all doing? There's so much going on in the true crime world. First of all, we finally have, we finally have a dog that is off my lap. Okay, we finally have a verdict. And I keep saying it's Massachusetts versus, okay, I am a mess this morning. I keep saying it's Massachusetts versus Rentala. And I'm like, was it New Hampshire or was it Massachusetts? I'm really not sure. But honestly, in that, um, the fourth trial of Kara Rentala, we finally have a verdict. Wait. First. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and this morning's broadcast, this morning's gossip news is brought to you by my friends over there in my close friend circle, my, the True Crime BFFs who are members who encouraged me to gargle, gargle with salt water. Child, last night I was a mess, a mess. Couldn't talk, couldn't breathe, couldn't anything. Got up this morning, it took like a whole bunch of um, zinc and elderberry and assorted pharmaceuticals and gargled with salt water. And now I am back among the land of the living for the most part. Still a little bit froggy, but not as bad as I was last night. My throat is very dry today. Please bear with me as I bring you the latest gossip. Look, we finally have a verdict in Rentala after four trials. Yesterday, Cara Rentala was convicted of the murder of her wife, Anne-Marie, whose name, whose last name escapes me. Um, anyway, so what happened was Cara killed, Cara killed her wife, right? She killed her wife, Anne-Marie. It was a domestic situation. Um, and she was convicted of, uh, hom uh homicide, Oh, uh, I'm falling apart this morning. I really should have written it down. She was convicted of killing the lady, but uh, oh, second degree manslaughter, something like that. She was convicted of manslaughter. Here's the thing, though. I was like, what is the um, what do you get for manslaughter in their state, right? Because Rintala has already served seven years in prison. There have been four trials in the uh, four yeah four different trials in this case. Two hung juries, two convictions. One conviction was for first degree murder and um, that verdict got thrown out. And then Cara Rentala was set free out here in these streets while she awaited trial again. Now she's convicted yesterday of, I think it was first degree manslaughter, something like that, second degree, whatever. She was convicted of manslaughter and she faces up to 20 years in prison. Now, this is her first defense. She has already served seven years. Her defense is like, well, we're just going to ask for time served, uh, ma'am. I'm going to need you to calm down because, no, she did still unalive somebody quite intentionally. And I was looking it up. You know, as soon as the verdict came in, I was like, let me let my thumbs do the walk in on the little Google machine and see what the um, what the punishment might be. And I was like, oh, I think it's 10 years. And then um, the prosecution was like, yeah, um, she faces up to 20 years and we're going to ask you to give her more than that. And I was like, oh, an upward departure. Okay, it'll be interesting to see what the judge does in this case. If I had to guess, right, I would say she's probably going to face something like 18 years or something, something along those lines. If she's already served seven, she's definitely going to have to go back to prison and do some more time, but not as much time as she thought. Here's the thing, though. They had a whole discussion about should her uh, bond be revoked. So the, the lawyers argue back and forth. Here's Rintala. Hmm? What? 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 I might. Hmm. I might have to go back to the big girl prison. Mm mm. I would. I would like to stay here. Um. In the land of the regular people, please and thank you. And the judge was like, blah 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 blah. Take her away. He revo he revoked her bond. And she was going, why? Why? Man, shh. No. Mm mm. Mm mm. Ma'am, you have not been sentenced yet. I'm gonna need you to commence to shutting the hell up so that um we could get this all together. I know her lawyer was like, heffa. Shut up. If you just be quiet and let me do, you see, I got you from first degree murder down to manslaughter. Maybe we could get you out on these streets sooner rather than later. Shut up. Shut up. So 
she was all like, mm, mm, uh, as they took her into custody. Um, lady, you already did seven years. Under I understand you don't want to go back. I get it. Nobody wants to go to prison, especially after you've been free and then going back. And you feel like uh, it was, I'm sure she feels like that was a public service homicide, right? Like not for the general community, but it helped her to not have to deal with her wife anymore. You know what the other options were? Divorce. I know it seems crazy now. It's like, oh, right, 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 right. I didn't have to unalive that person. I keep forgetting. Even if it was in like a moment of passion or whatever, you still not allowed to strangle somebody and then throw them down the flight of stairs and then throw paint on them. Ma'am, uh, I'm gonna need you to pull yourself together. But, but alas, she could not pull herself together, but the jail is gonna pull her all together. And so she's no longer raising her child who has got to be what, 10, 11 years old right now. I hope you kissed her real good this morning, told her bye-bye, cause mm-mm. Mommy's going off to the big house. In other dumb client news, look, you ain't heard this from me, but I got that good good on what happened in the Melly case. So the Melly case is going to come to trial for a retrial um, next week, next month, soon-ish, right? Coming here soon to uh, to a courtroom near you, they're going to start jury selection in the, my, in the Melly case. Little problem. Melly and his co-defendant, Cortland Henry, were both arrested on witness tampering charges. And I was like, what they been doing? What are they accused of doing? And so word on the street is that number one, Mariah Hamilton, who is YNW Melly's ex-girlfriend, has finally spoken to the police. There was a lot of back and forth about um, the fact that she was hiding out and they couldn't find her and they've been trying to interview her and whatever, whatever. Miss Mariah got with her lawyer and her mama and went out here on these YouTube streets and was like, um, if they drop the warrant for my arrest, then I will come in and talk. But until then, I'm, I'm about to remain missing. She been missing for three years in hiding from the cops. And so, um, apparently the warrant was dropped inside information word on the street is that, um, the warrant was dropped. She went into police and they had a little chitty, chitty chat chat with her. Well, seems like she had a whole lot to say about why she's been missing. According to rumors and speculation and the gossip, the rumor and the innuendo of this situation is that YNW Melly from behind bars and Cortland Henry from out here in these streets have been using messengers and burner phones and all this other stuff to get Mariah to keep from talking. Apparently, over there in the prison, see, they give you like some sort of number, like when you, um, like a pin number, basically, when you're in jail. So when you go to call somebody, you put in your little pin number and, you know, that's how they charge you and everything. That's how they keep track of calls. That is also how they are able to track your calls and record them and whatever. Wow. Mr. Bally, in all his brilliance, was using somebody else's pin number and was um, making phone calls. And the way it went, according to what I heard, is Melly told a friend, the friend told the Bloods gang, or was it the Crips? I think it was the Bloods, whatever. Yeah, Bloods, Bloods, because Bortland's the bees. Told um, the Bloods, tell uh, Miss Mariah, if she stays missing, there's something in it for her. And that if she stays loyal, she could be driving a pink Mercedes. Well... First of all, a pink Mercedes, ew. Um, but secondly, mm hmm, and uh, the money must have run out because now Felicia Hamilton and Mariah are out here running their mouths and they have a lot to say. Listen, Mr. Malley, you had to understand that allegedly, of course, all of this is allegedly in rumors and whatever, but you had to understand that at some point your money was going to run out and so did her loyalty. Um, uh. Felicia Hamilton, Mariah's mom, made it very clear on all her messages that we saw in court, her loyalty was for sale. And when the cash ran out, so did her silence. So um, according to Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer who's over here and he gonna react to all the self-snitching. You know Bruce Rivers. Ooh, I love Bruce Rivers over here on the YouTubes. Bruce Rivers was like, look, witness tampering alone demonstrates a consciousness of guilt and can convict you even if the state doesn't have the goods on you. So, um, Mr. Malley, Mr. Bortland, you're in trouble, boo. 
it's not going to go good. Um, they've seized cell phones. They've seized all this other stuff. And apparently they have the evidence that shows that these gentlemen um, were out here trying to get witnesses one or more to not talk. There's another witness also who apparently was promised a record deal um, in exchange for his silence uh, or in exchange for his um, saying what they needed him to say. Remember that um, there was two Melly friends who, who testified at the trial. One was this dude who said he wished he had smoked some weed before he got there. We remember him. He was a delight. And there was a, another young man who hung out at the YNW house who was like, yeah, uh, Melly was in the bed and Melly was my friend and Melly, Melly, Melly. Sir, uh, are you the gentleman who was promised a record deal in lieu of your silence? Oh, okay. Guess we're going to find out. I wonder if everybody is talking or just those two are talking. We're going to see. We're going to find out some more. Honestly, though, I could watch an entire show of just that one dude who said he wished he had smoked some weed before he went to trial. He was cracking me up. I was like, he was not there for anybody's mess. He didn't want to be there. He was like, look, y'all making me be here, so I'm here. But what you want from me? I don't even remember his name. But um, I just remember he was very funny, and I really very much enjoyed him. And were it not a murder case, it would have been quite entertaining. But anyway. The boy in the box down there in Florida. Florida, y'all got a lot going on. I mean, I guess they're giving the Mormons a break for a minute and all those folks over in Waukesha, Wisconsin a break because Miami, Florida, Dade County, Broward County, we getting a lot of y'all lately. Down there in uh, West Palm Beach, that's the fancy part of Florida, isn't it? Or is it Palm Beach? I forget. One of them is fancy and one of them is not. I forget which is which. But down there in the Palm Beach County Courthouse, there was some lady sitting in court yesterday, and I don't know who she thought she was or where she thought she was. She was looking at some evidence real hard in the gallery. She takes her camera and takes a picture, and then is like sharing it with the wife of the accused. Ma'am, ma'am, number one, you're in court. Number two, you are on national TV. Number three, you on the internet. You know these folks on the internet got nothing better to do than to watch you and snitch on you. You know right now somebody is doing a deep dive, doing a, a, a picture search of her family. Like, who is she? Where she live? What's her, what's her mama's name? Does she have a cat? Like, they about to find out everything about you. So, everybody was like, we gotta get on this internet and send an email to the judge, to the clerk, to the somebody. As soon as the break came back, the judge was like, listen, y'all mama Luke, stop taking pictures. Now, he said it in like legalese or whatever but at the end of the day that's what he was saying he's like y'all about to f around and find out now i told you you're not supposed to take pictures up in this courtroom don't make me put you in timeout not a timeout that would include a, a windowless dark box in a garage like this idiot over here who's on trial but i'm saying you gonna mess with me and you're not gonna like the results meanwhile on the stand the child psychologist got up there and was like, mm-hmm, this sort of punishment is very damaging to a child, can damage like the physical structure of their brain, damages them socially, damages them emotionally. You want to know how to make like a, a crazy shooting up the school serial killer kind of do? Lock them in a box in the house for a whole bunch of hours a day. That's not going to go good for you. I understand the frustration of having a child who won't listen and all that other stuff. I'm telling you, I've been saying all week. I raised one of those. It's not that fun. It will do some damage to your mental health. But if I was those parents, I would have locked myself in the box and be like, I just need this moment for a time out. Can somebody turn on the air conditioning and turn off the lights? I would have happily laid in a dark room for a great number of hours during the time that I was dealing with my defiant child. I was like, why did we have kids? What was we thinking? Oh my goodness. It was stressful. But these are the things you can't do to a child, sir. And if he had enough money to buy that big fancy house with the pool, he certainly had enough money to find a therapist, a residential therapy program, a something. I understand the resources can be thin on the ground, particularly if you don't have money or a lot of other resources at your available to you. But like there had to be some resources that were not this. Prior to being locked in a box in Florida, the young man was locked in a box in Arizona. And prior to that, he was kept in the parents' closet. What? Now, look, I know in New York City, there are some apartments that look like closets. In fact, I've seen closets bigger than I've seen some New York City apartments. But people were paying several thousand dollars a month for that privilege. And they had the option to come and go. This kid was just thrown in a cell in the dark with air conditioning. I guess that makes it better. And a bucket for a toilet. Hmm? Mm-mm. That's not a thing. And I 
was like, what did this man do for a living? And was he forced to resign from his job? Did he employ was his employer like, sir, you mm -mm, you can't uh, you can't imprison people at your house. So we're gonna ask you to go. Thank you so much. Um, I believe in the he was a, some sort of marketing executive. And if you look at him, he looks like a masters of the universe type, right? Like strong chiseled jaw, whatever. Under different circumstances, if I didn't know he were a horrible human being, I'd be like, oh, he's a nice looking gentleman. But no, I know that um, you are evil in your heart. So no, I will not say that you are physically attractive because nothing can make an ugly spirit like yours be attractive. But he's some sort of like Christian executive at a marketing firm. Where in the Bible does it say you can lock people up? Now, I know they talked about slavery and maybe you were just focusing on the wrong portion. He was like, oh, I see the word slave. So I'm going to enslave my child over here. That's going to work out good. Did you talk to your priest? Did you talk to your, your wife, a neighbor, a therapist? Was there a therapist who told you this was a good idea? Where did this idea come from? And he was only locked up for six weeks in Florida. He was locked up for two years prior to that. Yo, look, it's just a bad situation all the way around. And so the therapists have testified. Uh, the young man who was locked up, RF, who tested, he was so smart, so articulate in all these AP classes, has nothing but compassion for his parents. Good for him. I hope, I hope that helps his mental health and healing. When they asked how he felt about being here at this trial, he was like, apathetic. I was like, Ooh, get him to a therapist right away. I'm real nervous. He, um, he's still young. There's time for his brain to like finish healing or whatever. I hope he's an intensive all day, everyday therapy because this situation, it's not going to go good. It, it, it doesn't bode well for his long-term mental health. I understand that in the short term, those parents maybe thought they were doing something good, but in the long term, you ruined a child. Now you trying to set him loose on society for the rest of us? No, thank you. So um, this trial is wrapping up fairly soon and I'm looking forward to the conviction of both of his parents. I know they're going to be like, but he forgives us, but we're sorry. It was an accidental jail cell that we made in our house. Sir, madam, no. As far as I know, you've lost custody of all your kids, including your four-year-old, which I'm sure that breaks your heart. Sad for you, probably good for those kids because it's fine as long as they do everything you say. But the minute they do something that you don't like, um, your means of coping and dealing with that, it's not good. So it's better for everybody all around that you don't have no more kids. So I'm like, okay, um... I hope this all works out well for the children. As for those parents, whatever. Look, we have a lot to do today. Well, I personally have a lot to do today. It's a travel day for me. In fact, I have, I'll be traveling on and off for the next five, six days. Today's Friday. I'll be traveling between now and Tuesday on and off, on and off, on and off. Lots of trips going on. And so I have to get packed. I have to get myself together. I have to pull up some Google Maps. Oh my gosh, I'm so hot. Um, I'm not sure if it's that I have a fever, a cold, I'm flashing. Child, it is not easy being old. But also, there is lunchtime true crime. We are still working on deadly dentists. Did you like the deadly dentist who killed her husband yesterday and the day before that, the dentist serial killer? Okay, listen, you know you need to brush and floss on a regular basis. Also see a good non-homicidal dentist. These are just life tips from me to you. I'm not telling you how to live your life, but... If you, when you choose a dentist, try choosing one that has not murdered anybody. Just personal opinion. Look, I got to go. But um, y'all have a great safe day. I might see you on the 13th juror today, but I don't know what my reception is going to look like as I, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles. But um, you take good care, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.